Felix here. And Tallulah, my chief financial analyst, just said to me, Felix, what is PayPal stock's problem? And I said, it's a little complicated. Shall I explain it to you? And she said, yes, please do. In fact, why don't you make a video on it? So we are. And I'm not just going to walk you through the earnings numbers here, what's good and bad and ugly about it. I'm also going to show you what institutions were buying right after the earnings. We can actually see that. We can see the dark pools. I'll show you how you can see that too. And I'm also going to put all of my research into a document so you can download it and you get the max value out of this video. Just go to felixfriends.org slash PayPal and get your hands on the full shebang. So let's get started with perspective. Q1 income statement. This is what they actually did. So transaction revenue went up. <laughs> what have we got an arrow? We've got an arrow here. Transaction revenue went up 1%, 11%. That's pretty good. Revenue up 9%. Gross profit margins, uh, they declined. So that's that's not good. Operating profit margins improved, but net profit margins were just flat. So not a lot happening there. And <clears throat> they have cut down on expenditure. Excuse my funky voice. But it isn't a significant <clears throat> improvement yet. So is it good? Is it bad? Well, let's look at that. Chris has done a great job um, running, summarizing some of this. So I took a screenshot of it. Follow him on, on Twitter if you don't already. And he's saying the shockingly good news is free cash flow is up significantly. They guided to 5 billion for the year. In Q1, they generated 1.763 billion. And if you put that into a calculator, because your math is as good as mine, 1.763 times four is 7 billion. So they are potentially on track for 7 billion free cash flow, not the five guiding. And what do they do with that cash? They buy our shares. Yeah, which is good. It makes them worth more. So the at least 5 billion buyback guidance that we've got, the at least is probably a bit of an understatement. It could be significantly more. And here it is. Free cash flow growing 76% year over year adjusted 86%. That's a, that's a whopper. So that, to me, that was like, okay, that's the big number. And yes, companies are largely valued on their free cash flow. You can have profits, no free cash flow, but you can't have free cash flow. But you can't actually have cash flow, no profits. Okay. All right, wins in Toluda. You guys are right. Now, here, are, here is the good. Revenue is up 9%. Gap earnings per share is up 18%. And active accounts are up a million. Monthly active up 2%. That's sort of, you know, okay, not huge. Payment transaction growth up 30%. Transactions per account up 13%. Branded, which is where the money is at, uh, back to 7% growth and credit losses are down very significantly. So, so far, so good. Why didn't we see a massive monster rally? Well, we saw a bit of a rally, didn't we? Beginning of the day, we were up like 6% and then it sort of fizzled out. Why is that? Well, one thing you've got to always look at is, is perspective. I mean, literally just look, just type SPX into Google. The S&P went down 1.5% yesterday, one of the worst days in the last year or so. And that means it's quite hard to go against the trend, right? But I'll show you what institutions are doing. Margins. Hmm. Okay. This is a little complicated. So I'm probably going to lose about half the viewers here. But if you actually want to understand what's going on with the stock, then I'd maybe watch on. Operating margins fell from 21% to 15%. Now that's on a gap basis, which I tend to care about because non-gap is always adjusted and we removed all expenses we didn't want you to see. You know, that sort of approach. But the CEO has basically made some CUC changes and he's basically saying there's going to be a drag on gap margins in Q2 because of restructuring charges, firing people, right? Firing people is bloody expensive. You can't just tell them, go away. You got to pay them, right? You got to pay them out. Um, it's the weird world we live in. No, it's, it's obviously kind of reasonable, isn't it? Additionally, for the full year, this is expected to be positive. So the when you turn a company around, initially you get lots of expenses you got to pay, sacking all those people, you know, shredding all their files, blowing up all the buildings they were living in, and you know, all that kind of stuff, and not living, but working in. And then you get rid of those people, and then you see the glorious sunshine comes in because now you have less expenses, but initially it's expensive. So that's kind of what we're seeing that. So that isn't so terrible. So what do we do then with the stock? Well, 
if you look at the stock where it's trading, what happened? You look at a candle like that. Yes, we went up 1.38%, but we closed almost at the very bottom of the trading range. And it sort of means, yeah, it's good news, but lots of other bad things happened that day. That's typically what happens, or people were just weren't that convinced by it. So we did go up a fair bit. We are trading above our moving average lines here significantly. That's the 51 down here. That's the one that really matters. But not really quite the bounce that we were hoping for. My trade was up $2,000 at one point during the day and then sort of fizzled back out to pretty much zero. I, I, I imagine I actually haven't looked yet. So why is that? Well, some of that is that we actually hit resistance here at 70 and at 75, well, not 75, but that's kind of the resistance where it starts to kick in. Now, we were at one point during the day trading at $70 and we hit our head against it. And particularly for this week, there is a lot of resistance here at 68 and at 70. And those resistance lines really matter. And if you want to know where they are, you can find them in optionswatch.io. And this has basically got something to do with options positioning. These are call options. So when, maybe I should explain that. What happens, how does this work? Well, okay, say you have the resistance. So the resistance is at $70, right? Stock goes up to about $70. Now, the resistance are actually call options. So these are people who make money when you get to closer to 70. And therefore, people sell those $70 calls. And you might be thinking, okay, how does that, how does that impact? Well, who buys them? There is a market maker on the other side. We've got three of those guys on our team as our coaches, and they have to buy those calls. That's their job. So what, what does that mean if they've bought calls? Well, they are now basically long paper. They know own call options, so they're now bullish on paper. They don't want to be bullish on paper. They don't want to be bullish on anything at all other than making money and buying the next Ferrari. And how do they offset this bullish exposure to the stock? They have to sell shares. So what happens is next time, if you, if you do buy call options, next time you take profits, you are actually pushing the stock price down. <laughs> that's the impact of it. So it's a bit complicated. It's a bit like round the, the bend, but that's actually how it works. So when we go up a lot and you get these resistance lines here, the market sells. So that's what happened. Now, what did the market do after that? How the heck do you find that out? Well, if you go into smart money trades, so top right here, there's a tab, and you type in PayPal, as I've done up here, you can see all the trades from the most recent trades. And these are trades that have been done in dark pools or you know, uh, private deals, essentially, between brokers, so they don't show up on the stock exchange immediately. And the first trade here is by a PayPal call option. That's bullish. But then you get a bunch of people selling their calls. And that means actually probably profit taking. So it looks red, but it's probably more profit taking. We are going to label this a bit better in the next up update that's, that's coming shortly. But you don't see a huge amount of call buying. There's a bit here, another $200,000 here. Um, there's a bit there again, another $354,000. So there is a, it's a little bit of bullishness kicking in, but not massive amounts if you think about how many shares of PayPal there are outstanding. So the institutions are going, we're going to wait till next quarter and see what your margins are. Because at the moment, we're not particularly impressed. And that's essentially the way it's positioned. So I haven't done anything in terms of my trade. I've got a trade open into like literally 2026, which seems bonkers, I know, a really, really long time away. And I don't usually, I'm not usually a fan of those. I don't recommend the trade. I'm not saying you should do it or any of that. You need to understand the risks. Don't just blindly copy. That's a stupid thing to do. Uh, you know, yada, yada, da. But it just means if the stock were to go to say 100, I'd probably make it 200% or something because I set my mine up a little bit lower. So if we go much higher, I'll take a little bit of profit. If we go much lower, I'll keep adding to the trade. That's kind of my, my view with that. And I'm not saying, therefore, that I'm right and that PayPal will definitely go to the moon and any of that. But I think the ultimate problem with PayPal is 
it's a growth stock morphing into a value stock. And that means the growth investors hate it. The value investors are distrustful because when they're a growth stock and the, 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 you know, the growth stocks guys, it's a value stock. I hate those. Uh, and you kind of do this turnover of shareholder bases and you need to now win back the institutions who would actually like it as a value stock, but they just had such a crummy two years that it takes a bit of time to build some confidence here up again. And that's what they need to do, right? Because we were not just trading at 100, but, you know, we were we were at 300, right? So something trading at 70, that was at 300. Uh, there was a lot of pain in there, a lot of anger and a lot of frustration. And to try to convince them again, to give this another shot is emotionally is somewhat hard. If you enjoyed this video, download the full research. You can walk through it all. Uh, and I will also include an annotated chart in there of... Uh, where the resistance and support sits for the month of May, May he says, uh, which is 70 and 75. Resistance at 70 and 75 dollars. So if you enjoyed the video, share it with a with a loved one or a golden retriever or a friend and i appreciate you for watching and for tuning in and hope to see you on the next one here is a stock that's called ms and when you say it you must snarl slightly and you know pretend you're you're french a lot of french bashing in this video today right we have to take the piss out of somebody else here the germans perhaps i'm one of those um the French don't like the Germans anyway, so I can't really, can't really lose here. It's, it's, it's a win-win, really. Uh, 